I've really made some pretty cool things uh, since I got this new rotary axis and I'm really enjoying it and ever since I did the video I don't know a week or so ago uh, about this new upgrade I got uh, I've got a lot of questions about how I how I locate it on my table how I zero the Z how I do the Mach 3 settings and all that so I thought I would shoot a short video or at least try to keep it short and show you everything the way I do it. And I'll even pull this off and uh, show you what I changed because I did make quite a few changes uh, from that original video. I've just got it a lot simpler and uh, easier to use now. So anyway, let's get started doing that. Okay, I hope I've got this in the shot here. I'm trying to keep an eye on it and make sure I don't uh, start moving things out of the shot. But this is my setup. Uh, this is the rotary axis uh, that I got the other day. And I went back and I did have some uh, T-Tracks in here. In fact, this is the same board. The T-Tracks were on the other side. But I just didn't like fiddling with those trying to get this lined up. I needed something that uh, would slide real easy over this. So what I basically did is just took, this is kind of like just the way my old one was. And I've got this piece of... Uh, three-quarter inch plywood and I milled down and flattened it a quarter inch and you can see I've recessed uh, counterboard these holes so I could bolt this to it made it all the pieces the same width so I can flush everything and then flush this with the front and now this simply just sets on here uh, you can see I've run a long groove down this board and this is like one of the old toilet bolt type uh, bolts and I can just fasten this here put a washer right here and just real easily move it it's still a little sticky it hadn't got broke in good but uh, just move it and then tighten it down and if I'm running something a, a really big piece in here and it wants to try to lift this up I can also take one of my clamps and just put it down and hold this front end down once I've got it all in place. So it's been working really good. Um, I'll flip this over if I can to show you the underside. And you can see what I was talking about here with this bolt. I just cut a larger uh, oversized slot here. And here you can see where I had the T-Tracks and decided just to change it out and make it this much simpler design. And it works really well. As far as the uh, cable here, I just uh, had a little of this protective stuff I put on it and then I just put some uh, black electrical tape to uh, protect it a little more and then I have a Molex connector and I'll show you how that connects up over here when I'm setting this up. Okay, I hope I've got this in the shot. What I do is I just set this on the table and if I push this back, get it out of the way, you can see that I've got four uh, kind of blind holes right here that I just put a quarter inch end mill in my spindle and just kind of put them, I don't know, they're maybe a quarter inch deep or so. And basically what I do is I take old router bits and put them in that, those holes. And I can pull this, well, i got to get this out of the way. So I set this and just pull it against them like this and then as I'm holding it there just tighten it down with some clamps in about three or four places and I'm good to go. Then once I have my clamps fastened I can pull these out and I just to keep them in one of my T-tracks over here on the far side and that's what I use to, uh, to line everything to get it parallel with the x-axis. Okay once I have my uh, rotary axis clamped into position on the table where I want. Now I have to move my gantry forward and get it centered up over the uh, the headstock and the tailstock and get it on that center line. So I'll show you how I do that. Okay, to pull my gantry forward and get it lined up over the rotary axis, I need to come here and open up my Mach 3 and I've got all my different machine profiles here. So I'm going to select the Gatton CNC and click OK and that will open it up to where I can jog it forward. I'll turn on my 
drive box here. And I can go ahead and reference it. And then I can just bring it forward. I'm just going to get it somewhere close over the, uh, the center line of the axis here and then I'm going to swap out the bit and put a real pointy V bit in so I can get a, a more exact uh, center line with the, with the tail stock. Okay now that I've got my uh, real pointy 60 degree V bit in there I can get that lined up with the point on this tail stock and that will give me a straight center line for the rotary axis. So I can just bring this down a little bit, slide this over, and I can see that I need to come forward. And I can just keep playing with it until and that looks just about perfect in line. So now that I'm in line there. I will have to switch it over because I'll no longer be using the y-axis now so I will be changing it over to the uh, rotary axis machine profile and I'll show you how I do that. Okay I don't know how good you can see this shot but you can see here the way I have mine connected is I have one of these little uh, 12 lug uh, terminal blocks right here. This side right here is going to the stepper motor on this side, which just happens to be my A motor uh, that's slaved with my Y, which is on the other side. This wire right here is, you know, going in to tie into this motor because I'm currently using this as a CNC router. Now, this other cable down here is just a just a cable here that's got the uh, Molex connector and that's what I use to plug into my uh, rotary axis. So you can see what I have to do is I pull this off, this little cover. And of course it doesn't want to come off. There we go. I'm trying to do it without breaking it. And then I just take these four wires and move them down to this side. Okay, now you can see that I've removed the four wires here that were uh, from this cable that are actually going back to the driver and I just moved them down here uh, So that now I'm making the connection to this cable which will go to my rotary axis Okay, now that I've got the rotary axis connected. I've got the wire swapped out down there uh, What I have to do now is I need to close out this Mach 3 machine profile which is the for the GATT and CNC. So I'll close it out and then I'll just come over here and reopen this and come down here and select my rotary axis machine profile. And now it should be ready to go. And I will test this to make sure that the connection is running. I'll turn my drivers back on. see if we've got some movement and we do so it looks like we are ready to run okay guys before I show you the Mach 3 settings there's, uh, I want to mention that Mark Lindsay CNC has an excellent video on how to set up uh, his rotary axis and there's a few subtle differences between the way he did it and I did it so I wanted to kind of point those out uh, neither one are wrong it's just that there are different things that happen uh, for example uh, in his video he's pointing out that when he hits the A plus he wants it to rotate this way towards him which would be like this and when you hit A minus that it would rotate this way just think of this as a wheel it's rolling away from you and the other way it's rolling towards you and that will work perfectly fine but depending on how you program things. For example, when I was programming this, I had it running this way with the text like, like this. So you, know, you had to stand over here to read the text properly. Well, if I had my A plus running towards me, it runs the text backwards. It would have been fine if I had done it this way, 
but I didn't. I did it this way because I always like the, the fat end to be down here by the headstock. Uh, so anyway, so that's one thing when you see my settings, you, if you follow Mark and a lot of you do, you'll know that mine is different. And I even, just so I can keep it straight myself, I even put a little pencil mark here that I'll point out where I say A plus that way and A minus that way. And that way I'll always remember that whenever I'm doing something with text, I want to do it this way or the text will come out backwards if I do it that way. Okay, let's take a look, quick look at the uh, Mach 3 settings. I've got uh, my Mach 3 open here with my rotary axis. Uh, machine profile and let's just go up here and take a look at the ports and pins uh, and the motor outputs and you'll see that really the only thing that's different uh, from what is normally with my CNC router machine profile is that the y-axis is not enabled uh, you know when you're using the rotary axis you don't need the y-axis at all once you get it moved over the the center line so uh, that can be disabled. All the other settings are exactly the same um, and you can see what they are there. Another thing I will take a look at in the general configuration, normally where it says A axis is angular, when I'm running just the CNC router, the A axis is linear, so I have that unchecked. Um, but since I'm now using it with the rotary axis, I want that checked so that it knows the a axis is in degrees. Uh, the other thing I have checked on this uh, page is on the rotational box right here. You can see I have a angle short rotation on G0. What that means is that the if you have a uh, an A0 command like G0, A0, and you have that box checked, it will take the shortest path to get back to A0. Uh, sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes that's not a good thing. So you'll want to use that with, uh, with caution and know, uh, you know, play around with it and understand how it, how it works. Okay, and probably the thing most people are interested in is the motor tuning. Um, for my machine, I run my X, uh, you know, all the linear axis at steps per unit of 12,800. On the X here, I only have the velocity at 100 inches. Normally when I'm running it as a router, I have that set much higher. But here, 100 inches a minute is uh, plenty fast enough for just going back and forth down the center line of the rotary axis. So I just have it at 100. Uh, the Z axis is set exactly the same as I would have with my, uh, if I'm using it as a router. Uh, so this is uh, 12,800, the velocity is 120, uh, and so on. So no change there. Okay, let's take a look at this crazy number I've got down here in the steps per unit. This is going to be much different th because it's looking for how much, how many steps it takes to move one degree. And because I use 12,800 to move one inch on the regular linear axis, uh, and because I use a five star two revolution lead screw, that means I would take the 12,800 divided by two to get the number of steps to turn one revolution. So that would be 6,400. And then I take that times six because I have a six to one ratio with the belt driven uh, uh, setup on my rotary axis. And so the 6,400 times six gives me 38,400. And then I would divide that by 360, which is how many uh, degrees are in a circle. And that gives me the 106.6666 repeating. Uh, and that's how I came up with that number. The velocity, I just kind of played around with that number to come up with something where it looks like it's moving about the speed I want it to move at. So I've got that at 7,500 and the acceleration I have at 1,000. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it for that page. Um, one other thing I will mention is when you're running um, something with a rotary axis, you want to come over here to the settings page 
and like normally if you know this might be zero well if you go to put something in and say you want to run something a cylinder that's a three inch diameter cylinder you would put the radius of that in here which would be 1.5 hit enter and then when you come over here to the project run page this will be lit up to let you know that you have something entered in there and you want to make sure you do that every time you run so if you go from like say an inch and a half diameter cylinder to a three inch diameter cylinder you want to make sure you go back to that settings page and change that radius there so that it will make the a axis turn at the right speed um, that it needs to to uh, to run properly okay i've also been asked how i zero my z axis uh, i like to use the center line here so what i had to do is determine what the distance is from this center line right here to the top of this and i figured that number out uh, just by bringing this down and, and setting zero and then bringing it up and touching it off here. Then I went in and edited the script uh, for the auto tool zero and added that dimension to the thickness of my plate and also added the height so that it will come up higher. Uh, and this is how it works. I can disconnect this and set my auto tool zero. Let me bring this it right here and we'll try to get this turn where y'all can see it so I can set that right there hit my auto tool zero and this will come down and touch off the top of this block here and then I can simply hit go to zero and it will come down to the center line of the rotary axis okay I hope that answers some of the questions I've been getting about this uh, rotary axis setup I'm really liking this uh, and you know if you'd like to check it out there'll be a link down in the video description if you haven't already subscribed to this YouTube channel, please uh, think about subscribing. And if you do, hit the little bell there beside the, the subscribe button so you get the notifications every time I put up a new video. And if you do have any questions you'd ask, like to ask me live, feel free to tune in to the CNC with Dave Gatton show every Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we try to do uh, all kinds of um, different question and answer shows and, and sometimes we have a topic but uh, you know we'll always uh, take whatever questions you put there in the live chat so anyway that's going to do it for this video I thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time